recording yet, Errol? Is the video started? We're recording, Roland. Get on with it. Ugh, typical. I've messed up the beginning now, haven't I? This is our first videotape. I wanted to get it right. No. Oh, sorry about this, rat fans. <laughs> rodent greetings to all my beloved fans. Welcome to the Rodent Video Gazette Collection. <laughs> A special series of unique tapes for the connoisseur of rat memorabilia. I decided on this, our first release, to look back in time at our first trip out on the road. So join me, rat fans, while I flick through the pages of my historic diary and relive those happy moments in Rat on the Road. <laughs> journey began in Wales, Errol's homeland. We drove down from London in our clapped out old heap of old junk, the Ratmobile, yeah, <sighs> to visit all my fans in Cardiff. First stop, the castle. It's a lovely castle, isn't it, Roland? <laughs> Mm, it's a wonder I wasn't sick on the way down here, because I'm normally sick in cars. I'm not too bad on trains, as long as I'm facing the right way. Oh, do be quiet, Kevin. No one's interested in your travelling problems. Don't you realise the history of Cardiff Castle stretches over 1900 years? Recent excavations inside the boundary walls raise the possibility that the Roman legions arrived in the area as early as the first half of the reign of the Emperor Nero. Yeah. That's number one over there, the keep. Ah. Uh. And uh, over there is number seven. And uh, behind us is number two, castle apartments. Oh, I do wish I could see the guidebook, Roland. Look, I'm telling you all the interesting facts. What more do you want? I just want a quick look at the guidebook, that's all. Well, you can't, so there. Oh, this rucksack's heavy as well. Why do I always have to carry everything, Roland? Because superstars do not carry their own luggage. That's why, Kevin. We had a few teething problems in the early days with old Kev. He didn't understand, bless him, that it was his job to carry my bags and look after me. <laughs> But I put things straight, of course. I had out to be staying in luxury hotels on my tour around England, but I soon realised that Kevin was a little tight on the old purse strings. Yeah, luxury hotels were out and tents were in. It was the same with the car. I did ask Kev to buy me a Rolls, but instead he goes and wastes £85 on this heap of old junk we affectionately call a Ratmobile. Still, there's no point in getting despondent. So I took me shirt off, put on me anky on me head, and braved the English summer on the pier at Panarth. <laughs> mm. I hear the strains of sweet music. Oh, look, it's an end of the pier entertainer. Morning. Been playing that long, have you? No, not long. No, I thought not. Not quite mastered the instrument yet, have you? No. Uh, I expect you wandered over here for a few tips from an old showbiz superstar, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, no. no. No, no, I didn't. Who are you? <laughs> He's a comic too, isn't he? He doesn't recognise me. <laughs> you know who I am, don't you? No. <laughs> Laugh a minute with you, innit? I'm Rowan Rat Superstar. Have a rat bag. <laughs> there you are. And don't call us, we'll call you. Hey, one of my rat friends there going home a happy man with his rat bag full of goodies. Yeah. Rat bags were, of course, to prove very popular with all my fans, and even now I still get letters asking for them. We had a super week in Cardiff, which culminated in me meeting the Lord Mayor. Well, almost. Can you see the Mayor's car yet, Kev? No, 
I hope you haven't got lost. I'm sure the mayor will be able to find the castle, Kevin. It is rather large and the focal point of this city. In fact, the Roman wall facing us was first built around the time of... Uh... Oh, don't start that again, Roland. We've been through the guidebook three times already. No interest in history. That's your trouble, Kevin. You'd rather spend your time training fleas than learning about your heritage. Now go and see if you can find our guest. Oh, could I just try hang gliding off here, Roland? I've got it with me. It's in the boot of the car. Don't be ridiculous, Kevin. You haven't even learnt how to do it properly yet. Well, I've got to start somewhere. Do you want your training to start in hospital, Kevin? Because it will if you jump off here. Now go and find our guest. Ooh, you rotten spell sport. It's for your own good, Kevin. Why I bother, I do not know. He wouldn't let me water ski either. Excuse me, have you seen our special guest, please? We've heard each other, Dan. Palm well off. Our special guest, uh, have you seen him? Palm well off. We them go a bit each other, Dan, right? Oh dear, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, thank you for your help, and here's a rat bag. <laughs> I can't find the Lord Mayor anywhere. I can't hear you. The Lord Mayor isn't here. Oh, good! Wait there! I'll be down! Right, where is he then? Where's who? The Lord Mayor! You said he was here! No, I didn't. I said he hadn't arrived yet. You mean to say I've just walked all the way down here for nothing? Yes. Kevin, come here. You're a waste of space. Our special yeah. guest never arrived, thanks to Kev. Our time in Wales was sadly at an end, so we packed up our tent and drove back to London, our second port of call, on our Round England Marathon. Kev, why don't you tell them about that particular week? Thank you, Roland. Hello, rap fans, Kevin the Gerbil here. Hope you're enjoying our rodent video cassette, specially collated by Roland's mum, Iris. Kevin, get on with it. Sorry, Roland. Uh, I'm going to tell you about our week in London. We arrived rather tired after our long journey from Wales. So I suggested we pitched our tent in Trafalgar Square so we could meet as many fans as possible. Roland parked the Ratmobile right in the middle of the pavement, which caused a tiny bit of confusion on my part when I met my first traffic warden. Right, I got one, Frank. Here, is this your car, mate? No, it's rolling rats. Don't you try and be funny with me, mate. It's true. We're filming our new series called Rat on the Road. Then why isn't this car on the road? You're on the pavement here, and this is a no-parking area. All right. But Roland's a superstar. He can park anywhere. Oh, can he indeed? Well, I'll tell you something. One, I've never heard of him. And two, he cannot park anywhere, Sonny Jim. You're on the pavement, a no parking area, and I'm giving you a ticket. Ooh, what, for a show or a film? I haven't seen Return of the Jedi yet. Can we have two tickets, please? Certainly, no problem whatsoever, mate. Two tickets, that'll cost you around 20 pounds. But I thought they were free. Don't you try and be funny with me, sock face. If you haven't moved this car in five minutes, we'll tow it away or we'll put the clamps on it. Is that clear? I don't know what you're talking about, but thanks for the tickets. Feed the bitch, tip into big <laughs> Roland, we got two tickets to see Return of the Jedi. Where'd you get those from then, Kevin? They're from a nice man in a uniform. He put them on the windscreen of the car. Those are parking tickets, you fool. What have I got two for? I asked for two. One for you and one for me. Oh, Kevin, these are not tickets to go and see a film. They're parking tickets. That'll cost me £20. I thought they were a bit expensive. Have you no sense at all? There was a traffic warden, you fool. You leave this to me, Kevin. Now, where's a foreigner? Or a tourist? Ah, oh, excuse him, my monsieur. Uh, would you like Duke's tickets for Return of the Jedi? Going cheap. £20. OK, yes, it sounds good. Yeah, sounds very good. Where's the money? 
Yeah, 20 pound, lovely. Right, sold to the Frenchman on my left. <laughs> it's got rid of them then, it? <laughs> <laughs> I got confused there. I really thought they were tickets for a film. <laughs> anyway, uh, next day in my diary, I have Tuesday. Camping stove blew up. Kevin, are the bacon and eggs ready? It's almost ready, Roland. Ooh, these pigeons are everywhere. Ooh, can you believe this? An international superstar reduced to having his morning wash in a fountain. This is all Kevin's fault, of course. I told him I wanted to stay in the best hotel in London. Ooh, but the Hilton's too expensive. Well, of course it's expensive. That's what stars are used to. Expense, spending money, not doing things on the cheap, Kevin. Bacon and eggs are off this morning, Roland. Right, that settles it. I'm off to the Hilton for breakfast. Taxi! Yeah, over here. Roland, what shall I do? Come and pick me up when you've sorted that mess out. Hilton Hotel, please. <laughs> Roland was off. He'd had enough of sleeping in a tent, but I simply could not let him stay at the Hilton Hotel. It was far too expensive. So I paid a visit to the hotel and received a rather nasty shock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Kevin. Kevin who? Kevin the Jebel. No, uh, it's you. What do you want? You can't afford to stay here, Roland. It's too expensive. Look, I've had enough of this happy youth hostler image. I'm a star and stars stay in big hotels. Yes, and they run up big bills. Oh, do stop moaning, Kevin. Well, you'll have to move back to the tent tonight, cos I can't afford another two nights here. No, oh, what's the point? I might as well pack up me champagne and flowers and forget all about these trappings. Go and pay the bill, will you, Kevin? Yes, Roland. I hope he hasn't brought that clapped-out old crate up to the main doors. Fancy leaving the Hilton Hotel in that. I've gone and told them all I've got a Rolls-Royce as well. Hello, can I help you, sir? Yes, uh, could I have Mr. Roland Rat's bill, please, at mm. room 1914? Yes, certainly. One moment, please. Yes. Here, right. It just was for just two nights, wasn't it, sir? Yes, that's right. Yes, two nights. Yes, there we are. Thank you very much. <laughs> I shall never forget the size of that hotel bill. The Thursday of that week, we have entered into the diary, Roland forgets lines due to disco dancing the night before. London, what a town, streets paved with gold. Yeah. I'll return here an international superstar with a Rolls Royce and chauffeur and be rid of the... Uh, what's the line? I'm sorry, what's the line? And be rid of that stupid little creeper, Kevin the Gerbil. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll return here one day in the with Rolls Royce Chamber and be rid of that stupid little creeper, Kevin the Gerbil. Right, uh, one more time, lads, please. Sorry about this. Rolling right, contemplating life, scene one, take two. Right, uh, London, what a town. Streets paved with international superstars. I'll return here one day, an international street paved with gold. Oh, I've gone wrong. I've lost my concentration now. Kevin, you'll have to come and do it instead. All right, Roland. This is a result of you going disco dancing last night. <coughs> London, what a town. Streets paved with gold. One day, I will return here, an international superstar, with a Rolls Royce and a chauffeur, and be rid of that stupid little creeper, Roland the Rat. You changed the ending that wasn't in the script. I suggest you sit down and write me some more meaningful bits of dialogue, but keep them simple, Kevin. <laughs> I remember the lines. They were very simple, actually. All right, Noel, get on with it. Sorry, Roland. Our last day in the capital was spent at the Tower of London, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And there we have the Tower of London. Ooh, magnificent. The things that went on there. <laughs> it's the biggest castle in London, Roland. First built in 1902. The King and Queen lived there until 1932. 
Uh, just before the Saxons invaded England, the royal family then fled to a smaller castle in Croydon. But soon after, the Romans arrived and proceeded to build a big wall around the castle. That must be it there. Uh, of course, the Saxons couldn't get out, so they died of starvation. So the king and queen once more took up residence in the castle. Where'd you get that load of rubbish from? A joke shop? I bought it off a man in the street for two pound. It were a special offer. It's Darcy de Farsi's new edition of Tourism Made Simple. You'd have to be simple to buy that load of old rubbish. Darcy de Farsi. <laughs> I ask you. Oh, look, there's a beef eater. Now we'll find out the real history of the tower. Come on, Kev. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Beef Eater, could I have a cheeseburger and chips and a large orange? <laughs> no, only joking. Uh, you couldn't tell us a bit about the tower, could you, Kevin and I? Yeah, more sort of things do you want to know? When uh, it was built and that? Yeah, when was it first built? Well, it was built by William the Conqueror. The work commenced on it in 1078. Why was it built then? Well, it was built as a royal palace and to house the royal family. Mm, well, who lives there now then? Well, we live there now. There's 37 yeoman warders and eight ravens. Ooh, the ravens, eh, yeah, I've heard about them. Uh, when did the execution stop then? Well, the last execution took place in 1747, and that was Sir Simon Fraser, Lord Lovett. Ooh, I haven't heard of him, but I'm pretty uh, stupid when it comes to history, you know. Don't know much about it. Well, thank you very much, Mr Beefeater. I will now present you with one of our special rat bags. Oh, there rat, you are. A rat bag. Thank you oh, very much, Thank sir. you very much. Come on, Kev. His explanation was a bit different to my guy, but Roland. Of course it was. I told you yours was a load of old rubbish. I personally found Darcy de Farcy's guide very informative, even though certain facts were perhaps a little incorrect. Anyway, we packed up our things on Friday afternoon and moved on up north, right up to Edinburgh, where we had a super time, even though it took us hours to get there. Um, over to you, Errol. Thank you, Kevin. Um, well, as you know, rat fans, I was working in the VT department all through Rat on the Road. It was my first job and I was very, very proud to be looking after the cartoons for Roland's wonderful show. So actually, I wasn't in Edinburgh, but um, I'd be delighted to read from Roland's personal diary these events um, in Bonnie, Scotland. Our favourite rodent duo arrived in Edinburgh on the Monday, feeling rather tired. We made it! We finally arrived in Bonnie, Scotland. The journey wasn't too bad after all, was it, Roland? No, not bad. Uh, only took us two days and we only broke down five times on the motorway. Not bad, Kevin, not bad. I must say it was great fun spending the night at the motorway service station. Well, you have to expect a few ups and downs when you're on the open road. Yeah, especially in an old clapped out crate like this. Do you mind? This car cost me £85. Exactly. Another one of your wonderful bargains, Kevin, that we could well do without. Well, there's no time to waste. We've got to get kitted out. We're in Scotland now, Kev. Go on, Kevin. I'm embarrassed, Roland. Don't be such a baby. I feel strange in this gear, Roland. You certainly look funny, that's for sure. <laughs> You promised you wouldn't laugh, Roland. Anyway, you look just as funny. Your knees are all knobbly. <laughs> oh, I don't think I look at all funny, Kevin. There's nothing wrong with my legs. And to prove it, I walk down this busy street. No one will bat an eyelid at me, Kevin. No one will laugh at me. Just you watch. <laughs> 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 Who are you laughing at? Charming. They're all laughing at you, Roland. I told you this was a mistake wandering round in this gear, didn't I, Kevin? It was your idea, Roland. I think you'd be better off if you didn't wear the kilt. <laughs> Look, I've only just bought it, haven't I, Kevin? Anyway, it suits me. We'll be the laughing stock of Edinburgh. Pardon, Kevin? Nothing. Roland and Kevin didn't waste any time and were soon all togged out in tartan skirts, 
Roland even tried the bagpipes. I would now like to give you a recital on the bagpipes, the wonderful traditional Scottish instrument. Thank you. Oh, what's wrong with these? They don't work, Kevin. There's nothing wrong with them. It's you you can't play them properly. Give them here, I'll have a go. <laughs> oh, this will be a laugh. If I can't play them, you certainly can't. He's cheating. He's been practising behind my back. Not very successful there, eh, Roland? Be quiet, Errol, and stick to the script. There's nothing wrong with my plane. It was the bagpipes. Hmm. Well, Tuesday, it says here, visit Waxworks and Kev keeps on moaning about wanting to see Greyfriars Bobby. <laughs> okay, the new hey, Roland here in Bonnie Scotland. Hey. Roland, can we go and see Greyfriars Bobby now? What are you talking about, Kevin? Greyfriars Bobby, the famous statue of the little dog whose name was Bobby. Never heard of it. Anyway, we're off to the Wax Museum this morning. You know that, it's on the schedule. But we don't always have to stick to the schedule, do we? Of course we do. There's no point in having one if we don't stick to it. It's just that I never get a chance to see the things I want to see. I'd like to look at Greyfriars Bobby. You can go this afternoon on your own. But I might get lost, Roland. Exactly, that was the idea, Kevin. Anyway, we're here now at the Edinburgh Wax Museum. Come on. There we are. Ooh, look at them. Wonderful, aren't they? They're all made of wax. Come on, Kev. Ooh, they're all stiff. They look as though they're waiting for a bus. Oh, I do wish you'd wait for me, Roland. Now, who's this thing? Oh, this old Mary Queen of Scots there. <laughs> she got herself into some pretty sticky situations, didn't she, Kev, eh? <laughs> They're all there, Kev, all the greats. <laughs> now, uh, that's uh, Adam Smith, economist, whoever that may be. And that's uh, David Hume, and he was a philosopher. I wonder who that is at the back. Uh, <laughs> I do wish you wouldn't do that, Roland. I'll be in here one day, Kev. In with the greats, yeah. Wax modeler, Roman rep, superstar, yeah. yeah. My great-grandfather was Jamie Four Eyes McTavish. He organised spreading the bubonic plague, you know, yeah, around these parts. He was a highly respected rat, blind as a bat, but a born leader. Kevin eventually got to see the little statue of Greyfriars Bobby and it made his day, bless him. Now, where is it? It must be somewhere here. Ah, excuse me, is this Greyfriars Bobby? Yes, it is. Why did they build the statue of him? Well, Greyfriars Bobby was very faithful to his master. Yeah. And he stayed beside him, his master's grave for 14 years and never left it. He's, Bobby is buried right next to his master. Uh, poor old Bobby. Woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kev, Sonny, me. Yeah, Roland. <laughs> As you know, when we visit towns and different countries, uh, Kevin always likes to know all the historical facts or he swats up on famous writers or poets from that area. Scotland, of course, inspired him to read Robbie Burns, the great Scottish poet, but he found it a little difficult trying to concentrate at times. We slick it, cowering Tim Roos beastie. Oh, what a para in thy breastie. Oh, eh, oh. <laughs> eh, we slick it in the... Oh, Roland! Do be quiet, I'm trying to read poems here. Oh, oh I can't read with all this racket going on. But he didn't give up. Well, not for a while, anyway. Uh, um, we slick it, cowering Tim, Roos Beastie. 
Oh, what a parrot's the beastie. Oh, here's a good entry in the diary. Thursday. Met our old friend and lunatic, Rory McPherson, on Carlton Hill, whilst trying to enjoy a picnic, which was ruined by Kev for getting my champagne. Pass the champagne, would you please? I'll open it. Eh, uh, what champagne, Roland? The champagne I asked you to buy, Kevin. Would you pass it to me, please? Ah, uh, well, I didn't buy it because it was too expensive. <laughs> I might have guessed. Of course it's expensive, but that's what superstars drink, Kevin. How many times do I have to tell you? I got you a can of limeade, Roland, here. <laughs> well, that's a fine substitute, isn't it? I'll have the strawberries instead, then. Ah, yes, Um. Don't tell me, too expensive. No, they'd sold out of strawberries, so I'll get you a packet of crisps instead, Roland. There's no stopping you, is there, Kevin, once you start spending? Well, what have we got for afters? A uh, packet of wine gums each. Phew, wonderful. Well, we are having a wonderful time, aren't we? Yes, it's great fun, isn't it, Roland? We should have picnics more often. Phew, look at him. He's in a world of his own. The simple things in life, that's all he asks for. Well, one consolation is it's nice and peaceful up here, away from the hustle and bustle of city life. No, no. I spoke too soon. Oh, it's Ronnie McPherson. Oh, no. We managed to lose Rory at one point, but unfortunately he returned. Fancy bumping into you two. What a stroke of luck. I can show you my famous impersonations of pop stars. We've seen them, Rory. Not my flying ones. I now do them in mid-flight with the aid of my patented Rory McPherson flappers. Oh, we'd love to see this, wouldn't we, Kev? Uh, when you see me take off, please don't be alarmed. I will be in complete control. So I would now like to present, whilst flying through the air, my impersonation of Petula Clark singing her famous hit, Downtown. Thank you. Come on, Kev, let's get out of here first. What, and leave Rory to it? Exactly, Kev, come on. <laughs> when you're alone with all your cares and your worries, you can always go downtown. Uh, I'll be taking off at any moment now. And you're alone with all your cows and your arms. You can always go downtown. I quite like Rory myself. Uh, seems like quite an interesting chap. Roland and Kevin's final day in Scotland was marked in Roland's diary as Friday met another superstar. Now this proved a bit embarrassing for Roland. Our special guest star this morning is Scotland's own superstar comic, Billy Connolly. Yeah. I'm about to drive into the city centre to meet our guest, but I must just say at this point, full marks to Kevin for organising this interview. I may shout at him occasionally, but... You're always shouting at me, Roland. No, I'm not, Kevin. This time you've come up trumps. I take it all back. Anyway... I'd better be off to meet Billy. Bye. Bye, Roland. Good luck. Morning, Billy. I'm proud to meet you, I must say. When did you uh, first realise that you had the ability to make people laugh then? <laughs> He's not letting on, are you, Bill? No. Do you still spend much time in Scotland then, Billy? No. I suppose not, no. Uh, what about new projects then? Got any in the pipeline, have you? <laughs> He's a bit of a live wire, aren't you, Billy? I can't get a word in edgeways with you. There's no stopping you once you get going, is there? No, eh? <laughs> Wait a minute. He's as stiff as a board. He's a wax model. 
I've been talking to a wax model for the past five minutes. I've made a total fool of myself. This is all Kevin's fault. I knew it was too good to be true. Wait till I get hold of him. Poor old Kev. In trouble again he was. Still, it was their last day in Scotland, so all was soon forgotten. Next stop for our famous duo was Oxford. Over to you, Roland. Thank you, Errol. I'm glad your time was up because you're slowing the pace of the video down. What we need is a bit of sparkle to keep all my fans interested, not your boring, monotonous tones droning on. Let's have a joke, shall we? Yeah, here's a good one. Two sheep standing in a field, one sheep's going moo moo, the other sheep's going ba ba. One sheep says to the other, Oi mate, why are you going moo moo? So the first sheep says, I'm learning a foreign language. <laughs> That's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> uh, where were we? Oh yes, our next port of call was uh, Oxford. Yeah, dead posh there. Now let me see, what was it? Uh, Monday, Kev falls in the river. Yeah, this is good. Hello, run VT. Hey. Oxford began as a Saxon town, founded by King Alfred in the 9th century. Yeah. I normally read the historical bits. I thought I could do it for once, Roland. You always get it all wrong. Anyway, Oxford's a university town. What's a university, Roland? It's a place, Kevin, where you have no chance of ever going. Yeah. That's the River Cherwell down there. Come on, let's take a bad out, Kev. Get a move on, Kev. We're getting nowhere here. Why don't you roll? You're bigger than me. Don't be silly, Kevin. Superstars don't row boats. What do my fans think if they saw me rowing a boat? Mm, I suppose you're right, Roland. Anyway, we should have hired a boat with a motor. No, too expensive. Ooh, here we go again. Everything's too expensive in your eyes. How many times do I have to tell you? Superstars always spend lots of money. Well, I'm fed up of having to... <laughs> <laughs> what fun we had. I remember playing cricket on the Tuesday. Do you, Kev? Yes, Roland. I remember, cos you were absolutely useless. That's why I remember. You remember, cos it's written in your diary. All right, Kev. Well, let's have a look at your fantastic sporting skills, shall we? <laughs> right, Roland. <clears throat> Here I come. <laughs> <Ooh>. <coughs> <coughs> uh, sorry, Rowan. I'll have another girl. <coughs> Hurry up, Kevin. <laughs> right, Rowan. Here I come again. <coughs> <coughs> Now look what you've done. I'm no good at this game, Roland. I can see that, Kevin. You're not really the sporting type, are you? I am, Roland. I just prefer hang gliding or water skiing. And you can't do either of those properly. I shall now go and meet our collector of the week. Hmm. I think I shall try parachuting next. Yeah, here I am with our collector of the week. Hello, what's your name? Michelle. Michelle, yeah, I know it's Michelle because you wrote to me, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I've picked out your entry out of thousands of letters. What are you collecting? Stamps. Stamps, yeah. How many have we got there? 1,920. Amazing, amazing. Let's have a look then. Ooh, all different colours and things. From all over the world, are they? Yes. That's fantastic, that is, Michelle. Do you know what I'm going to give you now? Hi. Rat bag, yeah. Courtesy of Kevin, that is. Here you are. Not too hot at cricket, eh, Kev? <laughs> but I enjoyed meeting our collector of the week. She was a true rat fan, and I always love my rat fans, I really do, because they realise how wonderful I am. They uh, recognise my talent, and I respect them for that. Where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Blenheim Palace, Wednesday. This is a nice way to spend the day out, isn't it, Kevin? Mm. 
I don't know why it keeps breaking down, Roland. Cos it's a load of old rubbish. That's why, Kevin, hurry up, will you? Blenheim looks good in here. I can't wait. Uh, could you help me, Roland? Don't be ridiculous, Kevin. Superstars don't repair their own cars. If you bought me a Rolls Royce, of course, none of this would have happened. No, oh, I give up, Roland. I can't repair it. I don't really know anything about cars anyway. We'll have to work. No, oh, charming. It's miles. Well, we could hitchhike, Roland. Now that's a good idea. Oh, is it, Kevin? I've got a better idea. You could carry me on your back. You're too heavy, Roland. We'll have to walk. Come on. Nothing ever goes according to plan when Kev's around, of course. Here we are, Roland. We finally made it. I told you it wasn't far. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> oh, no. Wait a minute. Hey, Roland, it's close today. Oh, no. I don't believe it. Roland, do you want a bowl of water to soak your feet in? Would you believe it? The next day, Kev was up to his tricks again, uprooting trees and upsetting people. <laughs> Oh, morning, Rat fans. <laughs> we picked a good place to put our tent up here. Nice and quiet here. Oh, Kev, what you got there then? <laughs> <laughs> a few twigs to build a fire with so I can cook your breakfast, Roland. Looks more like half a tree to me. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Out of a garden over there. Uh, could you pass me the axe, please, Roland? <clears throat> what on earth do you think you're doing? Oh, morning. Who are you then? I'm a Don. An Oxford Don. And that happens to be my tree that you're dragging across the ground. How dare you touch private property? Uh, excuse me, Donald. Let me explain. That is Roland Rat Superstar. He needs his breakfast. I normally cook it on a stove, but it blew up a couple of weeks ago. So I now have to build a fire, and I need twigs. So I took your tree, didn't I, to chop up? I'm sure you understand. I mean, he is a superstar, and uh, he needs his breakfast. End of story. This is not the end of the story. You're both absolutely mad. How dare you touch my tree? I only planted it yesterday. My mother gave it to me for my birthday. Well, happy birthday, Donald. My name is not Donald. I am an Oxford Don. The word is derived from the Latin dominus, meaning master. Well, Dominic, you're quite welcome to share my bacon and eggs. I can't be fairer than that now, can I? Keep your hands off my tree. All right, you're not going to listen. Well, I'll help myself to something of yours. See how you like that. He gets excited easily, doesn't he, Kev? Pull up my tree. I'll take your car. See how you like that. I wish you would take it. It's a clapped out old crate. I don't want it. I want a Rolls Royce. Wait a minute. That car cost me £85. Of course it won't start. I might have known. No petrol, Dominic. Right. I'll take your desk. That'll do nicely, thank you. Wait a minute, that's my special competition desk. You can't have that. You've got my tree. I'll take your desk. And I'll have this computer. Yeah, don't touch that. It's a special prize. All right, you can have your tree back. Kevin? Here, yeah, Dominus. Sorry about the tape. At last. If you'd given me back my tree earlier, none of this would have happened. Just a slight misunderstanding, Donald, that's all. My name is not Donald, it is Hillary. And if you haven't moved your tent in five minutes, I shall call the police. Hillary's a girl's name, isn't it, Roland? Yeah, of course it is, Kev. Donald Hillary. <laughs> what a stupid name. He looks more like Batman to me. <laughs> I think I'll resolve that little problem. All it takes is a little diplomacy, and you're in with these posh types. On the uh, Friday, I insisted we went back to Blenheim Palace. I was determined to soak up a little culture. When was Blenheim Palace built, Roland? Yeah, well, uh, it was completed in 1725. Sir Winston Churchill was born here. Who's he? He was one of our great leaders, Kev. Was he a king? 
No, he was a prime minister. He made some great speeches, he did. Yeah. Oh, do you want wine gum, Roland? Are you listening to me, Kevin? Yes, Roland. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. That was one of his greatest speeches, that was, Kev. Oh, do they sell ice creams here, Roland? I'm trying to educate you, Kevin. Sorry, Roland. So Winston Churchill, what a leader. He was buried in the village churchyard at Bladen, not far from here, actually. I was artistically stimulated by Blenheim, and so I felt like reading a sonnet. Kev, however, was not in the mood. Any little theatrical piece I attempt to recreate, he ends up ruining it for me. He just doesn't understand the subtleties of art and culture. He hasn't even heard of Melvin Bragg. Right, back to a bit of culture, and it's time for our Shakespearean sonnet slot. Yeah, Kevin thought a sonnet was an ice cream. It is, of course, a poem, and this sonnet is about love. And Kevin is playing my beloved, yes. I feel a fool in this, Roland. Quiet, Kevin. <clears throat> then hate me, if thou wilt. Now, while the world is bent, my deeds to cross. Join with. Oh, Roland, I feel dead daft in this. I've had enough. I'm going. Thank you very much, Kevin. Kevin! What's the point? I don't understand it anyway. What a load of old rubbish William Shakespeare is. You can never read his stuff. It's all back to front. I had the same problem with Hamlet. What did I tell you? He ruined that piece of sonnetry because he doesn't understand culture. I'm going for a cup of tea. I'm sorry, I'm all worked up now. Kev, you'll have to do Newcastle. Yes, Roland. Sorry, Roland. We travelled from Blenheim on the Sunday up to Newcastle. I pitched the tent straight away. I learnt a quick method of tent construction from John Noakes, which makes life much easier. Pitch the tent here at the quayside. Get a good view of the boats coming in early in the morning, then. Mm, not very quiet round here, though, is it, Kev? What do you want somewhere quiet for, Roland? Because I'm a superstar, Kev, and I need a little peace and quiet sometimes to relax and not be surrounded by my fans. I know the answer. You could wear a disguise, then no one would recognise you. Yeah, good idea, Kev. Wear this large paper bag over your head. Yeah, thanks, Kev. <laughs> now no one will recognise me in this. <laughs> no, Roland. I'll start putting the tent up. Newcastle has got an interesting historical background. It was originally called Pons Alias in Roman times. It's Roland, that. <laughs> Are we on television? What's he wearing that uh, paper bag for? In disguise. Oh, <laughs> morning. Uh, this is to keep the sun off me head. Yeah, uh, I burn easily. <laughs> Roland always has trouble being mobbed. It's the price of fame, you know. Kevin, that's my line. Sorry, Roland. Uh, Tuesday, uh, train ride at Beamish. Kev does not appreciate old steam trains. <laughs> Here we are at the Beamish Museum, Kev. Let's take a trip back in time and have a ride on one of them old trains. That belonged to the North Eastern Railway Company and they played an important part in developing the railway system, Kev. Come on, let's go and have a ride. No, oh, I can't wait to have a go, Roland. <laughs> Stupid Kevin, they didn't have buffet cars on trains in the 1800s. Well, where's the toilet then? There isn't one. But I want to go to the toilet, Roland. Well, you'll have to wait. These seats are hard as well. I don't like these old trains, they're uncomfortable. Yeah, 
I'm also facing the wrong way, and I'll probably begin to feel sick in about five to ten minutes. This is history you're sampling here, Keith. I know, but I've had enough. Anyway, I want to go to the toilet. Oh, well, get off then. Please yourself. It wasn't that I didn't appreciate old trains. I was dying to go to the toilet, that was all. I wonder where Kevin is. Kevin! Kevin! Roland! I can't get out! Help, the lock's stuck! Roland! Serves you right. You'll have to dig your way out, cos I'm off for a cup of tea and a scone. See you later, Keithy. <laughs> did manage to get out in time to talk about the coal mine on the Wednesday, though. The industrial development of the North East was, of course, based on coal. At the heart of the colliery is the steam winder. Oh, do be quiet, Kevin. We don't want to hear all the technical details. They're boring. I'm sure our viewers would love to know how a mine works, Roland. Yeah, but you're going to make it interesting. I suppose you can do it better. Of course I can. Watch this. Here we are at the mine. I will now sing If I Ruled the World. Thank you. If I ruled the world, every day would be the first of spring. Every rat would be able to have a quick fling. Every rodent be free from his cages from now. Oh, if I ruled the world. You haven't told the viewers anything about the mine so far. I'm giving them entertainment, Kevin. That's what they want. I'm a song and dance man, aren't I? I've got the music in me. I know, you're wonderful, Roland. I just thought that your fans might want to know a little about the mine. Kevin, my sock size is more important to my fans than mining techniques used in the 1900s. Roland always knows best. He understands showbiz. That's why he helped me enormously the following day, our last day in Newcastle, because I was sort of, well, um, discovered by a big Hollywood film director called Sam Spiegelbeagle. Morning, Rat fans. Welcome to Rat on the Road. This is our last day in Newcastle. I would now like to sing a windmill in old Amsterdam. <clears throat> I saw a mouse. Where? There on the stair. Where on the stair? Right there. A little mouse with clogs on. Well, I declare. Going what a fantastic voice. On the stair. Where's it coming oh, from? Yeah. <laughs> a singing flea. Hey, kid. What's your name, flea? I'll sign you up and put you in the movies. Uh, Kevin, what's yours? Sam Spiegelbeagle. Chop, Hollywood film director. I could make you big, Kenneth. Real big. It's Kevin, actually. Who cares? We'll change your name. I can see it now. Singing Flea. It's Hollywood. I'm not a flea. Who cares? We'll call you a flea. It sounds better. I got it. Justin the Fru Fru, the singing flea. Do you like it, kid? Uh... Of course you do. You'll be a smash, kid. I know it. Well, it sounds wonderful, I must admit, Mr. Spiegel Beagle. I've always wanted to be a star. Who hasn't, kid? Who hasn't? Roland! Roland! I'm all excited! An American film producer's just offered to make me into a star. This all sounds highly unlikely. Where is he, then? Over here, Roland! Come on! Ah, Keith! Is this your friend? Yes, please meet Mr. Roland Rat Superstar. No, I don't believe it. Rowley, it's Sammy, Sammy Spiegel Beagle. Remember me on the phone? Oh, yeah, you offered me two films, didn't you? I'm your man, Rowley. What are you offering Kev, then? I tell you, Rowley, he could be big, real big. First, we change his name from Kenneth to Justin the Fru Fru, the singing flea. But he's a gerbil. Who cares? A flea sounds better. Next, we put him in a film with Betty Davis. Betty discovers she's got fleas and finds one of them can sing. They form a singing duo. Perform coast to coast. Everyone's bananas over the flea. Betty doesn't like this. And in a fit of jealousy, she stamps on Justin, flattens him to a pulp. 
What do you say, Rolly? Is that not a fantastic idea for a film? So, uh, what, he gets trodden on then? Yeah, flattened. It doesn't sound too good for Kevin, does it? Oh, can I do it, Roland? I want to be a star. It's your first film, Kev. You don't want to end up being trodden on. Forget it. Sammy, don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> so I was saved from the glitter and glamour of Hollywood. I didn't really fancy playing a flea anyway. It wasn't really what I had in mind. I'd like to hand you back now to our star of stars, our glittering light to lead us, the very own Roland Rat Superstar. Hooray! Thank you, Kevin. In fine creeping form, I see. Our last week on the road was in York, and according to my diary, Monday arrived and met the police. We're in York this week, yeah. So I thought we should dress in this traditional Viking gear. <laughs> the Vikings invaded England in the 9th century, and York was high on their list of places to invade. Of course it was. It was a wealthy town full of kings, so the old Vikings went berserk, didn't they? <laughs> York was called Jorvik in those days, and it was one of a chain of Viking ports. Roland, let's reenact the invasion. Yeah, who cares about the boring historical bits? Let's have some action, eh, Kev? Yeah. The Vikings stormed the town. We are the Vikings. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, drop everything. This is a Viking raid. Oi. What do you think you're playing at? We're dressed as Vikings. We're reenacting the invasion of York, Constable. We are the Vikings. Da -da 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 -da. You're disturbing the peace. And if you continue to shout your heads off like a couple of lunatics, I'll have you down the station. But he's an international superstar. We're making a film. Where's your camera, then? Over there. One moment, please. Sandra, if you're watching, don't forget to put a bit of butter on the cat's boil, will you? As for you two, keep your voices down. <laughs> All right, Sarge. Tuesday, we met our friend, the detective inspector, again. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here, then? Defacing public property now, are we? Oh, morning, Detective Inspector. We meet again. <laughs> we do indeed. I've warned you once. Now, take this lot down. You're defacing public property. We're filming, Corporal. We're filming his fan mail. He gets loads. I'm not interested. Where's your camera, anyway? Sandry? If you're watching, I'll have that pasty and chips for lunch. Get them warmed up for about 12.30. As for you, Mickey Mouse. Get this lot down. Don't you talk to me like that. I'm a superstar. I turn Mickey Mouse green with envy. <laughs> Wednesday was a strange day. Kev was in one of his stupid moods. So all we did was play around on the Roman wall until I got rather annoyed, I seem to remember. This is the Roman Wall, running round York, built around AD 100. It's a great wall, isn't it, Roland? The Great Wall's in China, Kev. <laughs> what do you mean, Roland? It was a joke, Kevin. Forget it. Uh, well, I'm going to pretend to be a guard on the lookout. Mm, well, I'm going to walk further along the wall. No, you're not. Halt! Who goes there? Excuse me, Kevin. I want to walk along the wall. Are you a friend or a foe? Kevin. Ah, you're an enemy. Then I cannot let you pass. Do stop messing around, Kevin. I want to walk along the wall. You cannot walk along the wall. I am a guard, and I am here to protect the wall. Kevin, stop it. Off the wall, Viking invader! If you don't let me walk along this wall, Kevin, I shall have to hit you extremely hard. Off the wall! Mm. Oh dear, I've knocked him off the wall. <laughs> I hope you're not still playing at being a guard, Kevin. No, Roland. I got bored with that game. Right then, my turn now. I'll be the guard. No gerbils allowed on the wall. Orders from William the Conqueror. 
I'm on your side. No, you're not. No one's on my side, so off the wall. I've been sent by Half Dean, leader of the Vikings. Never heard of him, anyway. I'm a Roman now, not a Viking. This one got the handkerchief on the edge. So off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's fallen off the wall again. <laughs> Kevin, you can stick your stupid game, because I'm going back to the tent for a cup of tea. <laughs> he never knows when to stop. That's his trouble. On uh, Thursday, we met our now almost constant companion, the constable. Or was he a uh, detective inspector? I don't know, but we had problems anyway. Uh, morning, Red Fiends. Roland here. Yeah, just finishing off my bacon sandwich and soaking up the ambience of York as it's our last week on the road. <laughs> oh, do be quiet, Kevin. Don't start all that again. Oi. You're on double yellow lines here. I've had enough of this. This is the third time I've had to pull you up. Where's your licence? What licence? To drive the car, insurance and MOT, where are they? What are you talking about? To drive a car on the highways and byways of this fair country, you need a driving licence. Have you passed a test? What test? A driving test, Orville, a driving test. I don't know what you're talking about. Kev bought the car, I drive it. It's as simple as that. Uh, excuse me, Corporal. He's famous. He can do what he likes. He still needs a licence and insurance to drive this car. Look, Inspector, I've driven this car all round England for the last six weeks and no one stopped me so far. I don't care whether you've driven round the world in it. You're not driving any further now out of the car. Hey, that's our car. You can't have that. It's going down the station until you have the appropriate licence, insurance, etc. Before I go, put your autograph on that for my wife, Sandra. Oh, well, here we go. Hey, old Road and Red Superstar, there you are. Thank you. He's taken our car! I've got his pen now, and I he can have our car. It's a load of old rubbish, kid. <laughs> Needless to say, we eventually got the Ratmobile back, thanks to Errol and a better Welsh ingenuity. <laughs> Friday, according to my diary, yeah, it was our last day. And also, the first time Errol made his TV debut. Yeah, exciting that, eh, hey, Errol? Yes, very, Roland. Yeah. Well, we've sadly come to the end of our little rodent video cassette. Yeah. But you can always rewind it and play it again. Such is the beauty of the pre-recorded video. Uh, me and the lads have thoroughly enjoyed reminiscing over our Rat on the Road tour. Uh, we hope you enjoyed leafing through my diary too. So until the next rodent video compilation, remember, I love you all and Roland Rat rules. OK. Uh. We've run out of tape now, haven't we, Errol? No, you're still on, Roland. Oh, charming. I've messed up the end now, as well as the beginning. Oh, everything's so sloppy when you're involved. Yeah, running out of tape, um, now. Ugh. Ugh.